The summer has got off to an excellent start for Mars One, with the long-awaited public release of the Paragon Environment Control and Life Support System study commissioned by Mars One. The report itself is about 56 pages long and well worth a read if you have the chance, but if not, I'll be releasing a detailed, in-depth video review of the report next week, which will step you through the key conclusions and technical data from the report. But the upshot is that Paragon has designed a life support system for Mars One that employs local resource production coupled with recycling to ensure that a human outpost on Mars can operate independently of the need to resupply gaseous consumables such as nitrogen and oxygen from the Earth to Mars. As it goes, the design is relatively simple, robust, and is noted as being compatible with 3D printing for replacement parts, so it seems an excellent step in the right direction to enabling a permanent human presence on Mars. Now crucially, Paragon also notes that through the course of their conceptual design study, they've concluded that the ability to have a human presence that not only survives, but thrives on the Red Planet is possible with the tools and technologies that exist today. If you want to check out the full report, I'll post a link to it and the associated press release down below. Perhaps more importantly though is what this study represents, for this is the first major attempt that Mars One has made to connect with the wider world of aerospace and the scientific community, to open an active dialogue on the best mechanisms to establish a lasting human presence on Mars. This conceptual design study release marks the beginning of the first phase of Mars One transitioning to becoming a well-formulated technical initiative vetted by existing aerospace providers with decades of experience. Expect to see many more concept design studies issued, completed, and released over the next year, and I for one am really looking forward to sharing these exciting technical developments with you. Now on to candidate news. First up, some of you may have heard that a number of candidates have chosen to withdraw since the beginning of the third round of Mars One's astronaut selection program was announced in February. To compensate for this, Mars One have selected six new candidates from a backup list created at the end of round two of the selection process, the identities of which will be revealed shortly. There's been two candidate meetups here in the UK this past month. The first was in London and involved myself, Lucy from the Czech Republic, and Jamie from California. I took the liberty to record a little bit of footage of that one, which you can check out just over here. The second meetup was in Oxford and involved Lucy, Alex from South Africa, along with British candidates Hannah, Alison and myself. There are a number of meetups coming up over the summer, as many of us have quite exciting travel plans. For instance, I'm pleased to now confirm that I will be attending the Mars Society Convention in Washington DC from August 13th to August 16th, and then heading over to Boston for a few days. Let me know if you'll be attending, because it will be great to meet some of you there. In the meantime, I've been actively visiting schools, presenting at STEM events, and I've even been asked to speak at an award ceremony for young people in a few days' time. All exciting stuff. In fact, one of the aspects of being a Mars One candidate that I and many of the other candidates feel is often overlooked is the incredible opportunity it affords to promote the exciting career possibilities in science and engineering. So a few of us recently got together and shared our thoughts on this with Chris Casper, who's posted an excellent article about this on his blog Small Steps to Space, the link to which you'll find in the description. This month's media highlight is a front page feature in the June edition of the EasyJet Travellers magazine. It profiles five candidates across a multi-page spread and also examines the prospects of the mission going forward. It's definitely worth checking out and as always I'll post a link down below in the description. Finally, I'm pleased to say that I've now finished my master's degree at Oxford University and I'll be graduating in just a few weeks time. As of such, I'm really keen to get back to producing regular weekly content for this channel. So I've already got some ideas, in particular one that I've got under active study at the moment is a first look at the Pluto flyby results from the New Horizons mission. But what I really want to know is what you would like to see. If you have any suggestions or ideas, feel free to post them down below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce Mars One mission updates around the end of each month, just like this one, bringing you the latest news on the project. This week's feature video is a dramatic rendition of the so-called Seven Minutes of Terror by NASA, highlighting the challenges of entry, descent and landing on Mars. Next week, I'll be releasing a detailed first look video on the results of the Paragon Life Support Study to both summarise the key conclusions and guide you through the report itself. There's a lot of great things coming from Mars One's direction this summer, so be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest developments in the Mars One mission.